Hey, hey, hello everybody. Welcome to episode five of the final split, an early episode for those of you that are uh, joining us in the chat as it is uh, 2 p.m. Eastern at this time. Normally we're live 8 p.m. Eastern, but uh, it's a special SGDQ episode. We're going to change up the format a little bit and uh, yeah. be discussing SGDQ the whole time. So uh, joining us this week, as always, uh, right below me here in the red box, we have Spike Vegeta. What's up, everyone? What's up? What's up, Spike? What's going on? You got the. Uh, uh, I've. Uh, <laughs> I, I said it before the show started, but yeah, I've been super, super busy, just like teaching all week, teaching acting workshops, and uh, I have sadly not been streaming. I hope to change that tonight after the show. So Sounds good. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll give you a chance to relax. Hopefully, uh, over in the green box, we have Sinister One. And he's he's been a man of uh, few words with the with the intro. <laughs> yes. he likes to, he likes I'm, 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 likes I'm giving the salute to yes, everybody sir. that came that got up early and or remembered to watch us at, at yeah, this it's a, yeah it's yeah <laughs> it's an odd time so hopefully I uh, salute you people hopefully we've got some dedicated fans there and of course uh, the guy we named the show after today the, the episode title the man in charge in the blue box our guest this week is Rom Scout hey hello hello <laughs> what up Rom Hey, Rom. Uh, not too much. You know, <laughs> pl playing SGQ, it's whatever. Yeah. Just being in charge. It takes like two seconds a week, I think. Yeah, it's not uh, <laughs> not busy at all, right? Uh, you got plenty of free time. Yeah, it's, it's I, I even found time to speed run this week, like one day. Yeah, wow. let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, some, wow. some PBs in the house here. Uh, Sinister One, what, what what's going on with you? I was de-rusting on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So by de-rusting, I mean I played through the game once mm -hmm. and then the very <laughs> next day i was like okay world record attempts and then i basically got a world record of 13 second improvement on like my second run so nice okay. nice <laughs> and so uh that happened. very very nice job uh and pb also for rom scout last night yeah i want to talk yes. about that so all bosses um i've been working on that that's what is offered for sgq uh it could be a mm -hmm. race with dacid bro and uh, yeah, cut off 20 seconds on that run yesterday, so nice. that was pretty cool. Nice. I, I took and so what's that down to now? Um, 33.37. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. actually shorter than uh, my first any percent record was a few years ago. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's weird. It's kind of cool. Nice. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't have too much to to report, but I took uh, half an hour off my Yoshi's Island time from last year, so that's kind of wow. Cool, but <laughs> big improvement <laughs> from last year. It, when you say year? when you say you took half an hour off, like usually yeah. that means there was some new major skip found or you know something <laughs> impressive. But no, this this was just uh, last year. I did it without knowing anything about the game, and I just decided okay. to give it a try. <laughs> so uh, uh, now you I should actually, make that a tradition. Yeah, I kind of had like an idea of what I was doing this time around. Still a lot to improve, but. Uh, yeah, and speaking of major skip, um, did you see V was down for V six whatever is down to like less than six minutes now? Yeah, it's, it's kind of silly. It's getting crazy. <laughs> I know Vorpal's going at it. He wants. Uh, yeah. He wants. And he got like a five fifty three or four. I'm actually not familiar with this. What happened to the game? Um. Well, okay. I mean, I don't know all the logistics behind it, but I know they death abuse in the war, the, like the teleporter rooms, and they. Uh, go through uh, the walls and get the crew members early. Then they save and quit and then mess up the triggers so that when they rescue all the crew members, it triggers the ending instead of going to the final area. So, Oh, wow. It's just, okay. yeah, it's, it's done. It's, it's, it's <laughs> turning into one of those, like, yeah, heavily broken. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's trying its hardest to, to make it into the, uh, the high levels of broken speedruns. So... We'll see what happens with that. Uh, but guys, we're here uh, this week to talk about uh, SGDQ in particular. And to do that, we're actually going to change the format of the show a little bit. This week is going to be focused entirely uh, on discussion. So uh, let's just dive right in here. We'll talk uh, real talk, as it, as it were. You could replace the word real with SGDQ this time around. Uh, <laughs> Because SGQ is, is not real at it all. Is, it yeah, is a very not. tangible thing. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're here to talk Summer Games done quick. Uh, obviously, Rom Scout is the guy that's in charge. Uh, first of all, how did you uh, come to be the head of yeah. SGDQ here? Give everybody um, the, the details. Yeah, I mean, initially, um, 
this is what three years ago at this point uh the first yeah. marathon organization i got involved in at all was uh after the tsunami hit japan and um you know it was a big disaster a lot of people were broken up about it and uh we we weren't really doing anything as a community though and i was just like look we just raised like fifty thousand dollars for you know prevent cancer foundation like two or three months ago uh, surely we can pull something together here so right yeah and about in about a week from scratch um organized uh japan relief done quick and uh, that's how our relationship started with doctors without borders as well who's the uh, beneficiary of sgq now and yeah it's just uh that that only took a week to organize by some miracle it it didn't go very smoothly i'll say that <laughs> and it's back on ustream so <laughs> but um it it uh raised a lot for back then it was like Twenty five thousand dollars or something. So, oh wow, yeah, good. I actually didn't know it raised that much. Yeah, yeah. and then um, after that, uh, the way it, I started heading towards running SGQ was Mike realized that he couldn't really dedicate the time to like have running two events and then uh you know have them both actually succeed to their full potential so we decided that i would run sgq and he would run agq and we would both be able to you know dedicate our time and resources to making each of the best event they could be so, so was this yeah. kind of your idea or were you approached by mike like did he um, kind of have like say yeah. hey do you are you interested in this or yeah i was more approached by mike um and then uh, actually, last year I was supposed to like shadow him running SGQ, but then it ended up just turning into me running SGQ. So that, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so yeah, this is my second time like having to do most of the work. But um, this one actually, just because of the number of people involved, it's it's gotten to be a lot more work than last year's was. So yeah, and maybe just to kind of break the uh, you know mindset that people have, might have uh do you want to explain like all that you're involved with as far as uh it, you know what decisions do you make as you know the the guy in charge uh is it, it's not just schedule like a lot of people think like what right all, yeah what all do you have uh, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is the game selection the schedule but um god the, there's like we had to make sure um a couple months ago a lot of the stuff i was doing was making sure that with how big we're getting, we have to make sure we're following the law and everything. So, I mean, I just had to check up with lawyers and talk with them, like make sure our procedures we do on um, the event match up with what's legal. And, you know, pretty much is fine. But um, then uh, I've had to negotiate with different hotels and try and get the best deal for us. Uh, I think... I mean, it, it ended up being a better deal than last SGQ. I mean, I, I honestly can't say if it's the best possible deal out there, obviously. But uh, the rooms are cheaper than the last SGQ. And um, then also the charity is covering the conference rooms this year. So that's a big expense off the registration fee. Yes. Which, a thing yeah. I kind of wanted to... Yeah, I wanted to make the registration fee cheaper than HGQ because it was, like, really, really high. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think... Uh... I think a lot of people would be really happy with that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, get, getting the hotel taken care of, um, just getting the relationship with the charity and um, other potential sponsors uh, handled, um, just making sure the logistics of the event, uh, like what kind of equipment we need, uh, what the setup of the different conference rooms is going to be. Um, you know, there's, there's just a... A lot. It's uh, I. I usually used to stream like a lot throughout the week, and I've probably found like maybe a day or two a week now where I can stream a few hours. <laughs> yeah, while the rest while the rest of us are like counting the days down, the, the, you're like watching above you as the clock is like. Yeah, it, the clock is definitely ticking. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, I definitely we definitely need to focus a little bit on promotion. Um, coming up but of course before that i have to finish the schedule i i meant to finish it by this weekend but 
I've had a lot of people dropping out on me uh, this week in various games, so it's been a lot of re you know mixing it around a little more. Yeah, uh, it's, I suppose that doesn't help. So uh, it, it's it's soon though. That's that sounds like yes. Uh, it, it's uh, if it's not by next week, you can start <laughs> like spamming my PM box and just you know bitching at me nonstop. It's fine. Right. <laughs> oh, we will be. Don't you? <laughs> You talk about uh, Mike kind of came to you and you both decided that you were going to take this over. And a lot of it, it's kind of amb or ambiguous or kind of a secret to everyone who all is actually on, I guess, the AGDQ or SGDQ teams. Obviously, it's not just one person who does everything. Mm -hmm. Were you allowed to kind of pick and choose, I want these people to do these tasks, or was it kind of Mike almost gave you his crew along with that? Um, I... Technically, I have the choice, but um, I felt that people have already put in the most work to the GDQs and are experienced doing it uh, for several years. Or sure. pretty obvious picks to just continue doing it, um, like Cool Maddie with the website and some of the promo, and um, you know, Uranium Maker with um, some of the tech set up and the you know the servers so it it wasn't like that it, there wasn't that much thought put into most of it um i mean i have thought of adding people uh to the crew since we, we keep getting bigger it obviously makes sense to have more people doing things like helping with promotion stuff like that um and it yeah it's it's mostly been the same team though um the committee for game selection was a little different, but that's just because uh, Mike and I talked and decided that we wanted both events to definitely have like a distinct schedule, right? We don't want them to just be a copy paste of each other because that would be kind of monotonous after a while. Right. So, I mean, you, you kind of get to bring your own flavor to the, the summer games marathons. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you do you know what that flavor is? Like what's what what do you think is kind of like the yeah, difference between you and Mike? I mean, it's still honing itself. Um I think I think no, the way the GDQs are going now, there's always going to be a lot probably a lot of Zelda, a lot of Mega Man, a lot of Mario. I mean, you just have to come to expect that by this point. But um I mean, there's some games that he just flat out said he would never take a risk on, like, putting in a GDQ schedule. And, um, <laughs> well, for instance, uh, Goemon, um, the Mystical Ninja for N64. Mm -hmm. He would um, never take a risk on that? He, he, he said that. That's what he said last wow. GDQ, okay. basically. <laughs> so, I mean, I, and I thought it was a pretty cool game that could have a lot of energy with it, especially, like, the breakdown dance song, whatever. So, mm -hmm. I... I thought it could be a pretty good fit, and um, SGQ can have. I I don't feel like um, you need to have like the biggest money making schedule out there to have you know hit whatever close to a million dollars raised. I think um, you can mix some big hitters in there with some more obscure stuff that's just as fun to watch and just as fun for the audience. Right. Uh, when when you're talking about that. Uh... Do you think people watch specifically for, you know, the big games or are there an equal number of people watching that just don't really care what you put in front of them and they'll they'll watch anything? Yeah, I mean, statistically of course it it's been shown that most people do show up for the big games. Mm -hmm. That's just when more people show up. That's what makes them gravitate to the event more, but mm -hmm. um I think if you have other good content throughout the schedule attached to that, then um you make sure people don't leave they stay there and continue watching and that's uh, one of the goals and um one of the improvements we can make with us certainly filling up the setup time better that's uh definitely a big thing that we've been trying to emphasize when planning for sgq is like all right like the the gdq monitor thing that cool maddie came up with is pretty cool that worked but like we probably need some more actual you know planned content going into what fills up that space? Perhaps interviews with runners, perhaps um, some overview of how to join the community, how to get be a part of SRO and SDA, stuff like that. Because uh, a lot of people end up having questions about that, and I don't think it ever gets properly answered. 
because we're focusing just on the donation comments and the game commentary most of the time. So when you say interviews, are you talking about you want content that's pre-made or are you looking for pre- and oh, post-game, well, if you will, interviews or some mix of both? Yeah, or it's, it's some mix of both. Yeah, I mean, it's not fully planned yet. Um, obviously, if it's something that if we were to go too heavy on, we'd have to just schedule it as much as the game schedule. And I'm, I'm not sure I want to go that far with it. Maybe just have a few set things we're planning and... Um, yeah, with the pre-made ones, obviously you're controlling the length, so that that's right. clearly yeah. helpful. Mm-hmm. Versus a you know a post-run interview, you know you kind of unless somebody knows that they're really limited in what they can say, then it could drag on a little bit. Right. Right. So I, I can go up to Spike before you know the run and kind of you know preempt him. All right, how you feeling, Spike? You you, you feeling good about this run? <laughs> Don't worry sure. about it. Only ninety thousand people are watching. Go get them. <laughs> Let's send it back to you guys. You know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean. Oh, oh, it, it doesn't uh, need to be exactly what I just said, but I, I feel like filling the dead air is something yeah. that um, definitely would be an improvement for keeping people interested throughout the event. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Spike, what did you want to say? Oh, I was just going to speak towards, you know, I guess I think about, um, like you talk about risks being taken for going on. Um, and that same sort of, maybe you took a if it's a risk, I don't think it's a risk. That's a good choice. Uh-huh. I, I I support that. But stuff taking risks like the Super Metroid commentary and just saying, okay, we're not doing this for every single game. We're trying it out one time here. We're going to see how it goes and maybe we'll repeat it in future marathons. And uh, I guess I'd like to see it, maybe see what your opinion is about trying something like that. Like, yeah, let's try a pre made interview. Let's maybe set up two or three live interviews because I think that could possibly be successful for people wanting that kind of raw either before or after the run, what's the runner going through? Uh, you know, if there's any thoughts on maybe commercials, specific like GDQ commercials that you can kind of put together and somehow run during that, I guess I'd just like to hear your opinion on adding any of those elements. Um, Possibly taking risks well, on them, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, part of it's, that, that goes back to what I just said about the um, filling the setup time. Um, so yeah, right. I wouldn't really consider a runner interview to be a risk. Um, sure. I, I guess I, I guess by risk, I just mean like trying something different. That we yeah, guess. I mean, we, every event we should be trying new things, I think. Um, as we grow, then uh, there are always different things that attract people to GDQs and make people want to keep coming back and watching them. Um, different styles of commentary, like you know the Super Metroid one, uh, probably got a lot more people interested than that wouldn't have been otherwise. Um, so I, I think mixing it up is good. It's just, uh, I mean, I, I haven't really spent that much time like planning out what particular new content is going to be in there because I've been trying to just focus on finishing the schedule and dealing with the hotel so far. So and speaking of mixing it up. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you said you wanted SGDQ to kind of have a different flavor than AGDQ, and when yeah. it comes to the actual schedule itself, uh, there, you know, for for quote unquote prime time hours, there's a, a tendency to feature some of those bigger and more more popular games, and it, you know, consistently, like there's certain ones that kind of just make it in. Is that something that you would vary a little more? Like, would you would you have a little more diversity there, or is that something that you're kind of sticking to the formula? Uh, I, it makes the most sense to put major titles like Zelda and Mario in prime time. Um, I, again, I think attaching maybe more obscure runs to those, like beforehand or afterwards, that uh, are just as fun to watch um, is a good call, though, because like maybe after, say... Um, an N64 block or something could include Goemon in it, and that's something that people normally wouldn't see, and they um, would stick around to watch it, though, I'd hope. <laughs> uh, it's the, the risk involved with putting, like, obscure stuff in prime time, like, by itself, though, would be too high. I don't... I don't mean I don't obscure necessarily. I'm just saying, like, to to kind of vary it a little bit more. It's been, 
you know, relatively consistent. In yeah, I mean, you, you expect to see, like, well, like Final Fantasy VI, you expect to do the finale. That's going to be the case. Um, <laughs> All right, we mean, have our first schedule confirmation. There we, there yeah, we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. It, it's awesome. gonna have a it's gonna have a hundred percent donation incentive, just like in Chrono Trigger did. But um, yeah, like I don't think. Uh, well, I don't know exactly where Skyward Sword should be yet. That's one of the big hang-ups I've had with the schedule so far. So, I I mean, you would think Skyward Sword, if it was anything like scheduling like HGQ, it would be like Wind Waker and somewhere towards the end and taking up a big block right before the finale, right? But I'm not sure that's the best call for it. I'm not sure that um, it needs to be be exactly like cookie cutter and have an exact formula for every GDQ. I think it will vary. Um, I, I think last SGDQ schedule was pretty different from AGQs. I I don't really see it being the exact same thing every time, but maybe that's just my perception and maybe you guys see it differently. Well, I don't know. Let, let me ask this question. Uh, so you, you talk about, you know, you're kind of having difficulty figuring out where exactly Skyward Sword belongs. Is that the kind of decision that's left up to you at the end of the day? Or is that something that you kind of consult with the games committee? on? Uh, I consult with people. Okay. Def- um, I, like, I think last SGQ schedule, I went through three drafts, two or three drafts. And it, I wouldn't expect it to be any different this time. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not entirely sure. You're, you're just asking if it's going to be different, like, than HGQs, right? Like, it's, it's not going to be exactly the same, it, but you are going to probably see more popular games towards the end of the marathon. Because, I mean, that, first and foremost, it is about raising the most money for charity. Uh, it certainly isn't just about that obviously if it was we'd only have the popular games so um it it does have an emphasis on that though so it makes the most sense to schedule um your some of your potentially biggest pulls at the end how much do you reference past marathons to say because i've even noticed down to like you know maybe certain like classic Mega Man games always fall into like this certain hour chunk of the day like 10 to 2 or something i'm making something up uh Uh same thing with like mario games do you reference those older schedules or do you kind of try to start from scratch and work from there just with your own knowledge of how popular the games are yeah i mean we do have to reference previous marathons just to see you know how did this game do in this block does it work Mm -hmm. there did i mean would it raise more if it was at a different time of day um so you do have to look at results from past marathons. It would be uh, kind of stupid just to like throw things on a sheet of paper and sure. hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we do reference previous marathons quite a bit um, in both game selection and the actual scheduling of the games. But at what point is? Not, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, it, it's fine. I, I was pretty much finished with my point. <laughs> I was just going to ask, at what point is data too old for you guys to use? Like, do you reference stuff that's two, three years old? Do you try to keep to just the most recent GDQs? Um, I mean, I've mostly been referencing other AGDQs and the last SGDQ. It's, I, I pretty much have thrown out the first two SGDQs just because they were so different from how this is organized. Like, sure. um. We had to be selective about, because it was at Ascension's house, we had to be selective about who would go. But we didn't really have to be selective about the games at all, because there were so few people. <laughs> Whatever um, you got, throw it in, yeah. Right, so, and there's, and they didn't raise that much. They weren't very well promoted. So, it, I don't really take much from the results of the first two SGQs. It's mostly looking at other AGDQs. Let me take uh, this this approach to it and, and see what you what you say. Um, so obviously, I mean, you've got your data and it and it, it shows you know Mario is popular, Final Fantasy is popular, Zelda is popular. Uh, do you ever get to the point where you're, you think maybe you're overthinking it, or maybe there's a gem somewhere that people aren't uh, yet attached to that they could be? Uh, do you have examples of those that you think might catch on this SGDQ that maybe uh, haven't quite hit that? Uh, you know, statistics mark necessarily. Yeah. Um, e- 
well, I mean, the Goemon one is one example, but mm -hmm. I even in the popular series, this SGQ has had games that have never been in before, mm -hmm. and so I, I think like Mega Man Five on Game Boy, that's a weird one. Four Swords Adventures and Oracle of Ages had never been in before, and um, probably aren't considered as popular as you know most of the games in that franchise. So. Uh, those are some examples. I think, um, like there, there are other great indie speed games. Maybe that some people, if they stay up to watch them, because they're gonna have to be in graveyard, I think. But like, um, Bunny Must Die is an example. It's an indie Metroidvania that has a lot of tech, a lot of skips, and it moves really fast paced. Okay. So uh, that's one to look out for. Um, I'm gonna look through the list right here really quick. Um, <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff. Um, Heretic hasn't been in before. That's that'd be a pretty good watch. And I, I know, uh, even though System Shock Two has been in before, it you know it's been a while. I think Peaches did it like two or three AGDQs ago, and that's got a lot more skips in it now. It's pretty busted. Um. Yeah, I mean, the the thing with looking for gems, I mean, it, there's no scientific formula to putting together a schedule, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, a lot of it is, um, and I have like seven other people, or no, six other people who uh, I consult with on the game selection, and... I mean, a lot of it is just um, us researching runs. I mean, I, I spend... I watched videos of any run I hadn't seen before when looking at the initial game cuts. And it's, uh, you just kind of, I guess, have to get a feel for, you know, what would make an entertaining watch. And um, so there's no, like, set way to look for hidden gems. Just they pop up when you sure. see submissions and you watch them. You're like, wow, that could be really cool. And mix it its way onto the schedule and uh then we just hope that it catches on like a gimmick caught on that was pretty cool um and then i mean there's there's other games like that but i, I mean gimmicks like this is the first one that pops in mind is like this game would have no business like being popular at all right but then people watch it and it's like oh wow that's a great speed run <laughs> how, how much of that is like the runner to bringing something to the game like beyond the you know the game itself. I mean, on one hand, gimmick is a pretty straightforward platformer, but then <laughs> on Cypher's hand, it's a whole different level of skill. So uh, do, do you ever take that into consideration when you're picking a game that maybe otherwise might not have made it? Do you ever kind of give it the, I mean, the inclusion uh, of because course. of a runner? It, it, of course. It's uh, runners who have proven themselves in previous marathons are easier to, you know, hand a new game that they are just learning than someone who you have never heard of like mm. and who has been streaming for like a week or something like uh it, it is kind of hard for new people to get in but uh at the same time a lot of new people do get in every marathon like um i'm just looking at the list right now so crack attack is running ninja gaiden 3 and i mean he doesn't get that many viewers and he hasn't been in a marathon uh, schedule before so it's I mean a lot of people can get in uh, yeah new Super Mario Brothers U with Luxelsier and Ewaller that's another thing so it's it, it's hard harder for people who are new to get in just because they haven't proved themselves at marathons yet but at the same time as new people get in every marathon and then perform well it's there's a lot more of the safer choices to go with and I think It'll be easier to just for anyone to you know run whatever game they want to at a, a future marathon. How much of your time you talk about how many hours you have to put into SGDQ every week, all the planning and everything? How much yeah. of it is just going into people's streams and watching that they're practicing or trying to look at vods, making sure you know the run's not going to be bad? How much of it's just that? Yeah, I I go into quite a few different speedrunning streams. Um, 
I generally don't talk in them, so. <laughs> sure. Uh, don't want to make nervous. <laughs> I right. see it every now you and then. You, you, you get that. You get that uh, message on IRC. It's like dash, or, you know, plus O Rom Scout, and you're like, uh oh. He, he, he <laughs> caught me. He caught me. Let's playing again. Like, it's not gonna bode well. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I wouldn't say the majority of it is watching streams, though. The majority of it is trying to get an event that could potentially have over 400 people um, mm -hmm. added to go smoothly. That that takes um, a lot more work than actually even like the scheduling. Yeah, so, so let's, let's talk yeah. a little bit about that if you don't mind. So SGEQ sure. is your, you know, the potential to be essentially uh, on par with AGDQ as far as, you know, entrance and... Yeah, um, entrance. Uh, yeah, attendance is, is definitely going to be up there. But at the same time, uh, it sounds like we've got some nice uh, additional conveniences. Double the space of HDQ is, is yeah, something that's hard to fathom. It's but... like two and a half tons of space. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. The, so the what do you plan to do? The smaller of the two conference rooms we have. Um, so we have like two big conference rooms. The smaller of those two is bigger than every single room we had for HDQ combined. <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> So, so let me just ask then, what, what are some of the plans that you have in store for all this extra space? Is it, is it going to be, yeah, like for instance, you know, AGDQ's practice room, for example, had, you know, TVs wall to wall. There were TVs on the inside. You kind of had to squeeze your way through at times, depending on how many people were in there. Are we going to see that again? Or are we going to see it, you know, just a lot more space, a lot more rows? Uh, what, what are some of the plans you have? Yeah. Um, I mean, with just more space, it should be easier to get uh you know more more room for the tech people and more room for the audience to to go in there i i mean i haven't when we were going over plans for how to change what we did wrong at AGDQ, i mean we had quite a few like a few really long meetings about like what can we fix from AGDQ, and that was before knowing that the conference rooms would be this big though so uh, we haven't gone too much into detail about what the layout of the room will be, but um, I, I know the basic plan will be sort of the same. Uh, it'll be like cut off into a section for the main marathon room, practice room adjacent to that, a casual room that's a little further off so that you know noise <laughs> is an issue, and sure. then the the dining area probably right next to that, the you know lounge area. And it, it might actually make more sense, and uh, we've talked about this, to have the marathon rooms, uh, the practice room and the main room be in the smaller section and have, like, the big gaming section and the big lounge section take up the, the bigger space because, sure. I mean, it's just an issue for that many TVs, like you said, right? It's just, um, it, it can get pretty crowded pretty fast, so maybe giving a little more space for that would make more sense. It depends on how many attendees there are, though. I mean, if there's a little less than we anticipated, obviously it would make more sense to do the opposite of what I just said. So but, how much? How many people would you anticipate putting in the the main marathon room for viewing sake? Like, I think it was around, like, 100 chairs in, at AGDQ or something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, we could obviously do more than that, maybe... 150, um, possibly up to 200, but I, I mean, I, I imagine the the same types of runs that got actually filled all of those for AGQ would be about the same for SGQ, and then um, the rest of the time, uh, it'll probably just be like you know a portion of that. And uh, I think one thing we could definitely change that wasn't done well at AGQ is making better use of like the camera on the audience and perhaps um, just arranging it a little differently so we can no matter what kind of crowd is there just have it reflect that they're being there and supportive. And are you going to change the lighting because of that also because that was another yeah, that's, uh, that's issue always, that that's been brought up a lot I, I think we do have to change the lighting it's um I mean, it's kind of hard with a projector also having to be there, but uh, if we if we can get around it in any way, having any additional lighting would be beneficial. Obviously, I I understand that it was a concern, and um, 
I mean, I, I take the concerns of the community seriously. And certainly if you have any more concerns, you, I, I encourage anyone to bring them up to me and, you know, PM me on SDA or tweet me or whatever. Just let me know what's up. Yeah, I mean, it certainly sounds like there's there's going to be some some changes from AGDQ, but at the same time, you know, kind of building on what works. So uh, it, it sounds exciting. I mean, the the double the space or more than double the space yeah, sounds really exciting. I'm yeah, and again, we weren't seeing. expecting that. Like, it actually ended up being cheaper than AGDQ's conference space, which is just like what? Like, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. But yeah, it doesn't. But <laughs> um, yeah, so. It, uh, we we just happened upon this conference space, and uh, I think as we get closer to the event, maybe in a month or so, um, I'll have to start looking seriously at how we lay out the room. I mean, there hasn't been much consideration yet given to how we're going to make use of the space, just because of having to focus on other things like the schedule and just getting the assigned to the hotel anyway. That's that's been the primary concern the last uh, you know couple of weeks last month even so we've been talking about the differences you know what you're trying to do maybe differently than agdq similar to it i know mike has started to project differences that are going to happen in the future such as uh close to no bonus stream trying to just have a complete overhaul of what that really is um having attendance caps what are your feelings now and going forward for sgdq do you want to model it that way what are some Things that maybe um, you disagree with them on or do agree with them on. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I going into it like as I just started uh, planning SGQ, it, I was trying to model it more like last SGQ, um, just a little more chill, uh, expecting less people. Then that went away probably a week after HGQ when I had like a million messages about it. It's like, Oh, okay. Sure. So there might actually be people coming to this. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I know it may be inevitable at some point if we keep drawing that attendance caps will have to be a thing. Uh, I'm glad that this event doesn't look to be the one to have to deal with that. But, I realize at some point that may be a very real issue, and it's it's such a touchy issue. It's not it's yeah. not one I enjoy talking about. Certainly, it's um, hard to imagine going from you know yeah. a few years ago being the uh, the basement marathon to suddenly being a con- <laughs> a, basically a convention oh, at this point. Yeah, yeah, we need a football stadium. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we, live from Yankee Stadium. You know, we talked about that the other day. Just saying, I, I want you know someday in the future you're going to buy your ticket on Ticketmaster. Right. I mean, there there are call some, the next speedrunner up. <laughs> there are some changes that I never want to make to these events, but mm-hmm. I know uh, in the interest of just having them continue working at all and being successful that they have to be made. Like, I don't want to cut people's games. I would like to just say, yeah, you can just yeah, sure, you can play that. Whatever, cool. I've never heard of it. That's fun. Um, sure. but, and we used to be able to do that like three years ago, but it's, it's just impossible now. Um, and so, I mean, that's a reluctant change, but it's a change that I've had to make and it's, uh, it would be the same thing with attendance caps at some point, I'm sure. I, I mean, I don't know exactly, I haven't gone into planning how I would go about choosing who attends at that point because I know it's not an issue for this SGQ. I know we have way more than enough conference space obviously regardless of how many people attend and um i mean i got enough rooms for like if 450 people attended but even if there's more than that um if we saw booked up the entire hotel even (laughs) then uh the hotel said like yeah we can negotiate like cheaper prices with the neighboring hotels if like for some reason that's an issue yeah so um i mean we can take up you know a lot of space i don't I don't foresee attendance cap being an issue for any like any SGQ that's at this hotel. At least. Yeah, I'd, it certainly sounds like the bases are all covered, and that's that's actually really yeah. exciting. So yeah, and um, what was the other thing you asked about besides attendance oh, uh, cap? Yeah, uh, b- uh, bonus stream. Because I know stream, Mike is right. thinking about how, you know scaling it way down to where it's only casual gaming. Uh, do you have is that going to be the same issue with this SGDQ? Do you want that for future SGDQs? What are your feelings? 
Yeah, I mean, I when I initially made the dates for SGQ, it was before AGDQ and not knowing how many people would be there. So it's only going to be like two days of bonus as opposed to like three, like before. Sure. Um, but I... I don't see the issue with having a bonus stream if um, someone's willing to take care of it and run it. I think if we get too big, though, um, and trying to get people runs in, if they start getting bitchy all the time, like I, that's where Mike's issue is coming in. It's like, um, you know, have, having runners who are in the main marathon may be like, bitch about not having a run on the first day or something. I know that was an issue that he had. And it's like, all right, if we're getting to that point, is it really worth it? I mean, sure, it's like extra revenue or whatever, right? And it's Because there's still like, what, like 30,000 people watching sometimes. But it, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like he thinks maybe that's just not worth the hassle. Um, and I'm, I, I'd be more like, hands off from uh doing bonus stream and i'd kind of be like all right just figure it out guys like as long as you, sure. <laughs> as long as you don't uh cause any drama or right anything. as long as you don't right. uh you know make everybody look bad in the process or something as yeah, long as it's being yeah. handled all right yeah then then it's whatever i mean i realize bonus stream is never going to be like we used to have it which is we just play like poverty games that we feel like randomly, and <laughs> it's not it going to be yeah. quest sixty four hundred percent or anything like that. I mean, it's uh, I think a, a benefit of it, um, the way it it's going right now, is that we can see how other runners um, who want to submit for future GDQs can uh, commentate and play their game at the same time. I mean, you can just get a feel for how they do with an audience there and having to do a kind of a mini GDQ run. So, I mean, I I, I don't really see myself cutting um, bonus stream from SGQ unless it gets to the point, like I said, where there's just needless drama created from it and it ends up being a huge hassle for everyone. But so I, I want to ask you, I guess, just one more question about that before we go on, because I know we're yeah. still not running out of time. But uh, is this something, because I know they tried to do some sort of thrown together patched organizing it afterwards, just the people who did it. Is this something you want to organize before we ever get to SGDQ? Maybe have someone on the side say, okay, someone you trust. We're going to have Melee Finals. We're going to have, I don't know, Mario Party. And they also plan out these are certain speed runs. We'll let people in and or is that too much, you know, depending on um, talk about organizing it? I mean, I, if we're going to have stuff like Melee Finals, I mean, I think that that was discussed beforehand anyway. I don't see an issue sure. with fitting that in. And that's what we did for last SGQ as well. Just like, all right, so it's free, free game until you get to six o'clock on this day or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we can block off that, and I would probably just uh, hand over the actual scheduling and, you know, however they want to deal with it to some volunteer I trust um, who okay. is actually going to be around during the event. Like, I think um, I think the AGQ was mainly handled by Hannah, um, who I don't think mm -hmm. is going to be at SGQ, as far as I know. So, uh, I mean, it would be someone else, but... I, I would probably do the same thing, just like, all right, you're in charge of scheduling this, uh, however it comes out, have fun. I, I think maybe they could benefit from having some kind of dock as opposed to just using a whiteboard, but I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a sure. logistical thing that I, mean, I, I would hope they have a common sense to take care of after seeing how the yeah. last one went. <laughs> I want to transition quick here before we uh, get the opportunity. I want to let the chat know, too, that we're going to be taking questions from you guys in just a minute here. We're going to have kind of an extended chat Q&A. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about ESA and your guys' relationship mm -hmm. with them. Uh, you know, ESA coming up this year, they're going to try a lot. Uh, of new things you know they're talking oh, yeah. the second stream yeah. they're talking not necessarily speed runs uh you know they're gonna have uh rhythm game demonstrations and and games of other genres that aren't necessarily uh devoted to playing them quickly but maybe playing them uh at a high level uh what 
kind of things do you look for from ESA and, you know, what, what can you learn from them and what do they learn from you? You know, like what, 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 what kind of relationship do you have, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I mean, with those we guys? have a very, I have a very good relationship with Eden all. Um, I mean, we talked quite a bit, um, after both our events happened last year, kind of like what direction we wanted them to head. And, uh, obviously we had to work out the dates. So we wanted them to be a little further apart than, last year's was because they're like what a week apart <laughs> like mm -hmm. i don't think that was in the best interest of esa to have them be a week before sgeq so um having a, a month separation i think works out a little better for both of us and uh yeah i mean there are things esa does better than us and some things we do better than them like things they do better than us i would say that their tech setup is ridiculous right like <laughs> I think that's one of the first things we always point to that um, ESA definitely does better than GDQ. And uh, so we certainly have a lot to learn from them in that regard. And um, so we've had quite a few conversations with Eden All and the, the tech staff for ESA about how we can improve and like what kind of stuff they use. And um, as far as the new stuff they're trying, like, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly be watching and just seeing how the two stream thing goes. I, I'm not opposed, um, personally to having two streams necessarily for GDQ, but I don't think I would jump right into doing two full blown streams that mm -hmm. require a full staff on it for I, the, the time's got to be right on it basically right I, I think um if we had any kind of second stream it would be like you know cover some casual stuff like non-speedrunner related um like the melee tournament or whatever just some other random stuff um like that on the side that's tournaments that are organized and i I think starting with that would be better than jumping right into doing a full blown second schedule and having 300 total hours of games yeah, that's, or whatever. Yeah. Like quite a lot. Yeah, uh, it's a it, it would be a mess. I think if we jumped straight into that, but I mean, um, you know, ESA is being super ambitious with it, and uh, I, I think they certainly have the staff um, to handle it. They they definitely know what's up so i i'll be paying attention to it and seeing what we can pick up from it and i think um yeah some other things with esa like uh, obviously the the main thing with esa is they're uh, we're both uh both of gdq and esa are community events and charity events but um obviously they put the emphasis way more on being inclusive of everyone in the community, making sure a lot more people have games, make sure that um, it's, you know, a lot more accessible to the entire community. And uh, the charity thing is kind of a little more backseat with them. Um, the charity thing for GDQ is a little more in the forefront, a little bit more of a focus. And I, I mean, I, try my best to make sure it's a fun community event as well and as accessible as to many people as I can while having it in, you know, a hotel. But it's, uh, it, there's no, there's nothing wrong with either one. I, I have no issues with ESA and the way they, they do things, um, at a principal level. So, yeah. So it sounds like you can kind of learn from each other. Uh, I want yeah, to, some... yeah, we talk quite a bit. It's, um, and I haven't really in a while just because I've been busy, but I mean, any time Eden All has an issue with something, mm -hmm. he'll come to me and vice versa. So Okay. Uh, I want to do some over-unders, uh, just some, some <laughs> guesstimation. I think Sinister One is uh, pretty excited about this idea. So uh, uh, you guys are all going to go on... fun little game, some yeah. prediction. Yeah, you, you guys are all going to go on records here. Sinister One, do you want to lead it, or do you want to? you want me to go with you as the? I'll, the I'll, guest I'll go first? with it. You, all right, I'll, I'll go with it since I came up with the over unders, and you guys can make the guesses. So, okay. um, uh, all right. So basically, you're just picking over or under whatever number I give you. So the first one, uh, let's go to Rom Scout. Uh, we're going to put you on the spot. Over or under seven hundred thousand dollars raised for this event? <laughs> <laughs> on the principle that I think I would be. 
slightly disappointed if we raised under that. I, I'd like to go over that. All right. Uh, I, mean, Great. I, I, I would love 750, 800, certainly. 750 or 800. Okay, let's go to Spike. What do you think? Over or under, Spike? I'm going to go over, and it's one of those that, because AGDQ, we said a million, and the first six days of that marathon, a million looked impossible. So you never know till the end of the marathon what's going to happen. You never know that final push. Yeah, I think 700k is going to happen. Golden, uh, I think 700k is is easy money. I think it's going to happen. Uh, wow, I, I'm easy money. I'm pushing for the second million. I'm going over. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, maybe I should have set this one a little higher. All right, let's move <laughs> on to the next one. Uh, we got max concurrent viewers. Would you say over or under a hundred thousand max concurrent viewers? Golden, let's have you go first on this one. Uh, a hundred thousand is a huge number, but we've come close a few times. I, uh, I, I'm going to say under, I'm going to say under just because that's a hard number to hit. It's a really hard number to hit, but I, I'd like to see it happen. I'm going to go under just to, to be that guy. Spike. Where you if, you go, if you go off of trends from last year, you had SGDQ didn't have as high a, a max as AGDQ, but it had more consistent viewer counts. And if you look at AGDQ this year, the only games that did crack 100K was, I think, Skyrim and Minecraft. And I don't know if we have anything quite like that. So uh, I'm, I'm going to push. Right at a hundred. No, I'll go <laughs> right exactly I'll, at a hundred thousand. He's going to yeah. exactly at a hundred. No what happens more. if you get it exactly right? Do you get five hundred dollars out of Bob Barker's pocket? Yeah, like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go slightly over. I don't know where it's going to be, but somewhere. A hundred right. thousand right. and one. Right. <laughs> one. Viewers. Mike is going to run out of the venue as soon as we hit a hundred k, and he's yeah. going to find find internet somewhere and be that that one. All right, Rom Scout, what do you got on this one? Yeah, um, I mean, like you said, last SGQ uh, averaged higher, and it came close to the peak of HGQ. It also had very little work put in the promotion of it uh, compared to HGQ, and I think we're going to change that a little, so I I would hope we go over, um, even if it's only by a little bit. Um, I mean, I, I think the peak was like 110 at HGQ, so it might be the same thing. It might be like get to like 105 or something and maybe hopefully we just average a little more i guess that's that's the main goal for me is just make sure yeah, it stays the, around the higher the, same average. the higher concurrent average yeah all right uh okay how about we got attendees has been going up and up ever since we started this whole thing uh yeah. spike vegeta over or under 450 attendees for this event 400 that sounds like so i think last sgdq we had like 80 so um, you are. Uh, we had a little I'm, over a hundred, but yes. It, oh, we did. Well, oh, how many okay. do you have at AGDQ just now? Like, over five hundred. <laughs> over five hundred. Okay, so just to put it in perspective. Uh, so okay. Well, where are you going, Spike? I don't want to influence I'm, your. I'm gonna go under just because it we lose almost all of the European audience when we go west, but I don't think it's yeah. gonna be like way under. I'm gonna say around about four hundred, but I'll go under. All right, Golden. Uh, I think there are going to be 450 stream monsters there, not necessarily people <laughs> just running. I'm going to go over on that one. Okay, that's yeah, that's that's what I mean. I mean total attendees. It doesn't matter whether oh, they're yeah. playing a game or just watching or just stopping by for the day. Uh, Rom Scout, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I have a little bit of insider knowledge, knowing how many rooms were booked on the first day. Oh, no. <laughs> so, it's a little bit I'm unfair. Not That's go not first. fair. <laughs> all right, all right. But um, I mean, it it's looking to be so far about 450. It, I, I think we could hit that. So I mean, I guess I'll go oh, over shit. just because it could be a little over that. But all right, yeah. all right. And some interesting insight from Rom Scout there. All right, last one, guys. Uh, Rom Scout, I'm coming to you first. Over yeah. under 1.5 world record set. <laughs> <laughs> How many were set at last HGQ? Uh, I mean, I know two were set at SGQ last year. I uh, can't remember the number for AGDQ. But... Dragon Darts, Metroid Zero Mission was record. Uh, technically, GoldenEye 007, two players. Two, two players, players yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how do you account for the uh, the obscure categories in that? Well, yeah, no, I'm just saying, and it, it as long as it's a record, it doesn't have it doesn't matter whether yeah. it's obscure yeah. or not. So 
Uh, so then I saw it go. I, I I have faith we can have two world records of some kind, even if it's some category we made up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Spike, what do you got? Uh, I'm going over. Surely we can find two world records in this. Get the hype <laughs> train going. Golden, uh, I, I gotta be the one to disagree here. I, I don't think we're getting uh -oh. two world records. It's. Uh, uh -oh. uh, uh, I'm only disagreeing because they they, they said they said yeah, over. I want to I want to be right. So you want to be different. I want to be, be right. I, yeah. want, I think you I don't know. know I, 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 I think it's reasonable for people to hit world records in marathons, but it depends on the game uh, and the level of competition's going way up. So uh, okay. it's going to have to be the right game. But Golden, you're you're saying that once we get bubble bobble world records. <laughs> We're, I was going to say, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you two runs that won't hit world record, and that, that's if I'm running Mega Man Six and if I'm running bob, Bubble Bobbles. <laughs> Get them off All the right. schedule. Yeah. From. yeah, first two cuts right there. All right, so that wraps up over under. I guess the only other thing I I wanted to get into before, as Golden mentioned before, we were going to take questions from the chat. If we could just have each of you say what you're looking forward to the most about the event doesn't necessarily have to be a run it could be anything that you're looking forward to um spike do you want to kick it off oh sure i'm i mean as is every gdq i'm uh always excited to see all the new faces uh that are going to show up uh, i'm excited to meet people like checkers for the first time who's going to show up uh i got to agq a little bit late so hanging out with used pizza i think will be fun um and other than that just the sheer Craigasm face I had when uh, UA showed off how big the conference rooms are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to that and seeing how we're able to uh, utilize all that space. I think it's going to be exciting. All right, Golden, what are you hyped for? Uh, I am hyped for a few things. The first one being that IHOP isn't the only place to eat when we're there. So, uh, <laughs> there's going to be some variety. I don't have to have pancakes every day. Uh, I, I'm also excited to, like Spike said, I love checkers and checkers culture, so I'm looking forward to meeting checkers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was but uh, yeah, just hanging out with everybody again. Uh, it's always the best part of the marathons and the reason to go. Uh, you know, running running a game in the marathon is, is great. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an awesome incentive to want to go. But it's not the reason to go. The reason to go is to hang out with everybody. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. But if I had to pick uh, runs that I'm looking forward to... I would go with uh, X1 and X2. Those oh, are, are going to be oh, yeah. Those are going to be sick. Snipe. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I was I, I, I was going to I was going to say I'm I'm going to put my two cents in before Rom Scout, but Golden Golden <laughs> might be there. So let's Golden go to Rom stole Scout. Both cents. Rom Scout, what are you what are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what you said. I just really enjoyed um, seeing all my old friends and then new people who uh, I didn't know I'd be friends with, and then just they, they're pretty chill every every marathon that happens with a few people. Um, and obviously, I look forward to breaking my all-time sleep record at SGQ. Um, I hope to get more than three hours this time. Please do for 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 your sake and for everybody else's. I hope you get more than three hours of sleep. <laughs> All right. Um, well. Yeah, and uh, obviously, um, just uh, because of. I've been around the speedrunning community a long time. The Tiki Kalo rivalry is just <laughs> ridiculous, and I love those guys. So uh, the Mega Man X race is one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to. All right, yeah, good answers by all of you. I, I concur with every single thing you guys said. I'm definitely looking forward to to meeting new people, uh, seeing old friends, the the races, and I guess the one other thing I would say is I'm I'm looking forward to the big surprises. There's always like one or yeah. two big surprises each marathon and you never know what it's going to be something unpredictable yep. you know maybe somebody just comes out of nowhere that you've never heard of and has an amazing run or just something that yeah, happens cool. or you know anything like that and then of course also uh food trips i love food trips getting to know people a little bit better you know you get some some time to just kind of talk uh in a smaller group than being at the venue so that too but all right all so right. I guess yeah. we'll throw it back to uh, Gold here with the Q and A. Yeah. On that note, guys, uh, this is the chat's opportunity to kind of interact and ask any questions they might have. Uh, I know you guys could probably have a lot to talk about. Uh, it is the boss rush. Time for some Q and A. Uh, we'll take your questions now for Rom Scout in particular, talking about SGDQ. If there's anything you want to know, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to ask, uh, you know, the four of us, feel free to ask it now. Uh, and again, uh, be sure to follow Rom Scout if you guys aren't already following Rom Scout, uh, guest of honor this week. So be sure to check out his stream, getting in that Soten 
these last couple days. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I also did um, at some point randomly in the week a fiery blizzard after getting fed up with V being destroyed. Uh, <laughs> Uh, decided that we should like start picking up the GBC Zeldas, so we did like a really scrub LADX race, and that was a lot of fun. So I might actually like start picking that up a little I, bit. I love that people are just yeah playing it again. It's a, that's a fun game. It's uh, yeah. I really think it's one of the uh, better handheld Zeldas that's out there. So it looks like we had plenty of questions come in already. Uh, first question is, uh, do you think there'll be more four player races? Um. Well, I mean, there's only going to be potentially one for this SGDQ, um, and there's one for AGDQ. So, I mean, I it, it's hard to find games where there are four, like, evenly matched players. That, that There's um, not really not a lot of games out there where the, the very top level is several people. It's usually games that have been, you know, broken down already for years. I, I think... I mean, I don't think we're doing any four-way um, PC race, but like Portal would be an example of a game that top level are like always just seconds apart, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's always right there. Um, and Super Metroid, obviously, Mega Man games usually work out that way. So I mean, I, I don't know. Um, there, I don't anticipate ever seeing more than um, maybe two or three. The way things look right now um for upcoming submissions to yeah. future marathons so it's but, kind of a it's a pick and choose thing yeah i mean we we want the races to be competitive mm-hmm. so we do put a lot of emphasis on having pbs close to each other and just being consistent so but I'm going just, off of what you got yeah oh uh it's yeah it's just what i said it's just it's it, it's hard to imagine it picking up so much that there's always going to be like a growing number of games that there's like four plus top competitive players who are all going to a marathon right mm-hmm. it's hard to picture that um for too many games all right we actually have a lot of questions here so feel free yeah to, uh, I, I could imagine <laughs> give the give the short answer if you want to on some of these <laughs> uh is there any run in particular that you're disappointed in that it got cut uh maybe because other people wanted it cut and you wanted it in as, as the organizer? Uh, you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. Maybe. That's, yeah. Like <laughs> I don't, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't answer it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that would be beneficial <laughs> really to answer that, but uh, there, there definitely are instances of games that I want in the schedule. I don't make it in and games that I thought shouldn't be in the schedule, but then uh, you know, the rest of the committee on, almost unanimously thinks that uh, they should be in. So, I mean, it, if I were to have my dream schedule or whatever, right, just to, based off my game preferences, it would be like, what, like 150 hours of Castlevania, like some random shitty JRPGs and like uh, like Mega Man <laughs> or something. Right? They will be yeah. shitty. Yeah, <laughs> they have to be <laughs> shitty. They can't be good like Final Fantasy. They, have to be <laughs> they can't be legit. <laughs> um, my so, dream I mean, it would be, schedule. Yeah, it would be like 150 hours of like some very specific things. So if I were to put my tastes above all else and choosing the game, the games for the schedule, I don't think that would be the most beneficial thing for the event. So I do value um, having input from others who have also uh, been around GDQs quite a long time to, you know, uh, just you know, let me know some things that I might be missing. Just things I didn't consider because of my bias, natural biases with some stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't. It's always going to be the case where Mike or I have a game on the schedule that we don't agree with or whatever. But in the end, we we accept that it, it was probably the best choice for the event, and I, I stand by that. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions here. Tom one two seven wants to know what do you think about. Uh other styles of speedruns such as OOT bingo races in live marathons. Yeah, that's been brought up a couple times. Um, I remember even Cosmo bringing up like last SGQ afterwards and maybe suggesting for AGQ. Uh, I think it works better on bonus stream um, just because of uh, there's a lot of people that 
watch these every time that aren't even familiar with speed running all that much right they just happened upon the event because they saw it on like a website or whatever so they they come in and if they aren't even familiar with the concept of speed running even if someone's explaining everything that's going on the concept of bingo and especially if they aren't finishing the game uh would just it would confuse way too many people and um i mean that's not to mention the the setup you'd have to have mm-hmm showing it on the stream yeah but, it's, it seems like a like a specialty kind of thing like it's it's yeah. something that the community would appreciate but might be harder to appreciate from outside of that well exactly. i guess would it would it be more easy to appreciate if there were commentators that were kind of getting the audience you know the information that they needed more like the super metroid style commentate commentary like if it was really well explained or is that still not good enough right that's what i'm saying even with like the best commentary you could picture for if somebody is not already familiar with the concept of like going through a game fast and like how this stuff works in general, if you're not basically already part of the community, jumping to bingo is like, what the hell is going on? I literally can't understand this, even if you tell me what's going on. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's, that's my feel on it. I think, but. Yeah, I think we can leave it at that. Mundungu wants to know if there's any plans to address PC game issues. Yes. Um, obviously, that was one of the big issues with AGQ um, and as we get more PC games into the schedule every event that's a, a growing concern um, so like so, some things uh, I mean I even have like some things written down because I mean, we talked about this in great detail right after AGQ I mean we have to uh, we're building a different streaming machine for SGQ just because Mike can't really bring it out from AGDQ or where he was every time. So, uh, but it's going to, we're going to have to have some emphasis on like having the games already ready to go before the event. I think, um, just re relying on people to like install them mid event is not the best idea. I, I think we should make any effort we can to have them ready to go so that, it's minimum setup. It's only you know it's setting up the game, and it's already on the PC ready to go. Um, and we we also are uh, trying to have more experienced tech people on at all times. So like, if you've never done tech before, then we're gonna have someone shadowing you uh, who knows what's up and make sure that. You know, it'll help for future events as well, so that more people get experience in this kind of thing. We don't we don't run into any bottlenecks like we had before. I mean, those are just a couple of things. There's a huge list of things that will be improving. I I don't think we have you know time since there's a lot of other questions. But I mean, you're you're welcome to talk to me at any point if you want. PM me whatever if you want to know more about what we're doing. And obviously, I'll announce it closer to like when we're talking about room layout and stuff. Okay, it uh, looks like we maybe have time for a couple more questions here. Uh, Spicy Panda Roll wants to know, will the chat be sub-only at SGDQ? Spicy Panda Roll, interesting Could, name. Yeah, interesting name. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, I don't intend to start it at sub-only. I, I think there may be times where it calls for sub-only. I think when we got... there, There's some times when the chat just got way out of control at SGDQ. Um, I think... Generally, the mark we noticed was when it hit over 80,000 viewers. Um, but, I mean, it's not going to be like, you know, a, a formula that we go off of like, oh, 80,000, it's sub only. Like, I, I prefer to have an open chat. Um, I think perhaps if the events keep growing and it just gets to be too much of a hassle, I, I could understand if we had to go to sub only, but that's not my plan for SGEQ uh, starting out. Uh, without sub only, would it be slow mode then? Uh yeah, likely. Maybe. Okay, just trying to yeah. make sure clarifying that. I'm, I was assuming it was, but just to I, yeah, put I, it out there, <laughs> you don't want like just pretty, wild copy pasta everywhere and right. Ch Chad dies for months. But uh, <laughs> all right, uh, let's see here. We maybe have time for uh, just a quick question. Um, one more question here. Let's see. How about uh, are there any planned guests? such as developers uh, or other special commentators? Yeah, we had... 
<laughs> During the game submissions, I think everyone who had like a non triple A game was like, "Hey, I can have the dev do commentary." It's like, all right, <laughs> it <laughs> seems actually, to be a popular thing. Yeah, yeah, we need to c- cut back a little bit. I don't think it um, calls for the, like not every run needs dev commentary. Obviously, it's not beneficial to every run, but uh, the options there for a lot of runs. So we will definitely have some of it. Um, Actually, some interesting uh, things we're doing that we haven't done before is um, we've talked with Humble Bundle and trying to get uh, some more involvement with the devs that way. Um, trying to get like some packages and stuff for you know games on the schedule and stuff like that, and that's another way we can uh, have close communication with the devs as well. So we might pick up a couple from that. Just who knows, but. Yeah, it, there's some uh, that's not specifically planned yet, but there will be dev commentary. I don't know if there will be as much as HEQ or um, if it will be the same amount and just better planned. I think definitely if we have dev commentary, there's there's a need to have it be a little better planned, um, and we definitely need to change some things like have the game feed go through Skype rather than you know them have the 40-second delay or whatever it is watching the stream. Um so we, we make some changes, but it's, it's definitely going to be there. Okay. Well, I think that uh, covers all the good questions I saw, unless uh, Spike or Sinister One, you saw any other questions that stood out? I did not. I think we're good. Cool. Yeah, I think we covered, uh, covered it pretty well. So uh, once again, uh, thanks to Ram Scott for being on the show. And before we let you sneak away, oh, you. Uh, we're going to give you the, uh, the spotlight here for a minute to kind of give shout outs to anybody that you want to. Uh, because uh, if it will load here, there it is. It's time for the speech. <laughs> speech. And all right, I, I'm not randomly choosing this week. I, I figured since we kind of grilled Rom Scout for oh, an hour, you're, you're, uh, you're not you're not going to be Tony Reale for I, like I'm a totally totally uh, <laughs> biased on this one. I'm just awarding it to Rom Scout. So uh, whatever okay. you want to do, if you oh. want to give shout outs, if you want to say anything about the event. Uh, if you want to tell me that my games are cut, whatever it is, your games are cut. Don't uh, worry about it. That's okay. Okay, good. There. <laughs> it's, I, 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 I uh, knew what happened eventually. I just, I just had to hear it. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I really love this community and just all the people that have made it grow over the years and made it what it is today. So, I, I don't have any particular shout-outs. I mean, obviously, all the people who I've seen at previous GDQs are good friends. So. I love all of you. Um, again, if there's ever anything that you see as an issue, either with like how I run SGQ or just I don't know things you find in the speedrunning community in general that you don't that you think we could have some say in improving, um, definitely hit me up. Um, either a PM on SDA or like a tweet, Rom Scout SDA, just stuff like that. It's. Uh, I really value community feedback, and it like if it was just my, just like with the game schedule, if it was just my decisions on like everything that happens in uh, GDQs, then it I don't think it would be as good as it could be. So there you go. The moral of the story is uh, we love you guys. Everybody loves everybody. Yes, so there you go. That's good to hear, guys. Uh, that's our episode with rom scout the man in charge of sgdq uh schedule coming shortly looking forward to seeing what uh what's in there what isn't and uh, i'm sure we'll break it down once that happens but uh yeah mo- most of the cuts that have taken place since the last game was have just been runners dropping out okay um, making your job a little easier i guess yeah so cool i, I mean I, I will go over the games when i release the schedule that got cut because of that so hopefully it's not a shocker to anyone mega man one got cut i mean I, I guess that's one of the bigger names that got cut but it was on the bubble anyway <laughs> so on the bubble i like this like I'll, i'm gonna say the bracketology right, four out i don't know man I can't, I can't wait to break it down we're gonna have to do something we like need that. a joe lenardi we yeah, need exactly. someone who's always got an updating list we, we need it we have a joe lenardi we're, this we're guy gonna have box a... down he, 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 he does, he does this right, show so. on his stream from time to time yeah. where he predicts which games are in 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna have the speed running RPI before you next. Haven't, you haven't the given them seeds though. <laughs> I, I, what, what's your number one seed? Like, what's your ultimate lock game that will never get rejected from any marathon ever? Talking to me. Give me your I number think one seed. Metroid has been has been in every single one yeah, so far. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Literally, Super Metroid and Soton number are one seed. the number one seed. You can't argue. <laughs> They're going to play in Raleigh, North Carolina, all the way to the Final Four. All right. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, on that note, uh, that's that's going to do it for this week's episode. Next week, we're back to our normal time, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have Ivan on the show. Uh, so look forward to that. I think we're going to raid, uh, is it the Mumble Crew? Is that what we're raiding? Yeah, it's yeah. Goron Guys channel specifically. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Mumble Crew is doing a marathon to raise money for uh, getting some of their guys to SGDQ and ESA. Uh, and that's been going on all weekend, so it's already in progress. So head on over there. Um and, and raid with, uh, I don't know, whatever you're uh, being told to raid with, I guess. It's up to... Yeah, whatever that face is. <laughs> whatever that face is? Okay. Whatever Piven is. Okay. <laughs> All right. That, yeah, that sounds good. If you don't have anything else to raid with, uh, just tell them that your game got cut. Um, so that sounds... <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, thanks again to Rom Scout for being on the show. Uh, thanks, Sinister and Spike Vegeta, uh, as always, doing a nice job. And uh, I'm Golden, and just reminding you guys until next time that your run isn't over until you hit what, Spike? The final split. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.